It's now a universal truth in the world of aviation. With its breakthrough pure power engine, Pratt & Whitney is going where no engine maker has gone before. And Connecticut is along for the ride. Twenty years in development, the new engine slashes carbon dioxide emissions, reduces noise pollution, and drastically improves fuel efficiency. Up until then, um, we measured changes in fuel efficiency in, in two, three percent, and then to come out and say we had something that was 15 percent better. The orders are rolling in. 6,000 new engines scheduled for production, which will start by the end of this year. You know, with our backlog that we have, uh, we're, we're seeing volumes that we haven't seen since the 70s and 80s. There's such a big ramp of engines coming soon, so they really need us to be on our game. Jessica Duke's been a mechanic at Pratt for nine years, working on the so-called legacy engines. My job is pretty fun. Um, I built the first section of, the, of a jet engine of the V2500 line. Cool. These conventional engines power planes on nearly 200 airlines from 70 different countries. They'll still be built in this section of the facility using traditional techniques. And in the wing next door, This area here, it's about 35,000 square feet, and this used to be where we built military and industrial engines, going to an overhead assembly system, a moving assembly line. This is really a unique thing that, that Pratt Winnie is starting, using automotive assembly line uh, techniques in a jet engine assembly application. It's going to allow us to build the engine more efficiently, which means that we'll be able to build it in a, a shorter amount of time. Ted Slew spent two years getting this area ready for the pure power production line while John Godone made sure his mechanics didn't miss a beat on their daily orders. Well, the challenge was transforming this facility while we keep production running. So we deliver over 500 engines a year out of this facility, and we had to carve out about 20% of our shop floor to go change how we do business. We delivered all of our engines uh, on time to our customers. The real challenge of transition and maintaining both is when this production line starts up and to transition from legacy to new is going to be our challenge. And then we also have the uh, increase in volume on the military product as well. Is there a little more pressure on them with this line than other engines they've rolled out? Um, it's a new design and it's a new build process so there will be a little bit bigger challenge but they're, they're ready for it. Pratt engineers and mechanics not the only ones gearing up for the huge order. Uh, the commercial market really... Jeff Paul, Chief of Operations and Engineering at the Whitcraft Group with its headquarters in Eastford. We have never done development on this scale ever in the history of the company. One of the critical cogs in the wheel of Pratt & Whitney's supply chain. I've been in aerospace since the early 80s and I've never experienced uh, anything like this. These new engine platforms are going to have volumes that are larger than most any other engine that we make parts for. Whitcraft's been prepping for the engine ramp up for two years, reconfiguring the factory floor to improve workflow, building their own custom machines to boost efficiency. We can quickly and efficiently put these machines close together so that the technicians don't have to walk very far between operations. We compete against countries from Turkey to Taiwan, Mexico, China, and so we have to do everything we can to be as efficient as we can here in Connecticut. So it's important that we're constantly planning and looking out for the next 18 to 24 months to make sure that we're going to have the resources we need to execute flawlessly on these programs. The drive to build better, lighter, faster propels the people making the smallest parts to constantly hone their products. And it's chaotic at times. Uh, design changes as a result of test outcomes. Engineers want to improve the products. When they make the design changes, we have to change our manufacturing processes. This is what we call our delivery and quality clinic. The checks and balances that keep everyone at Whitcraft on their toes. If we were late with a part, First question is, why were we late? Once they identify that point of origin, we put in place preventative actions so that it'll never happen again. 
quality team. How are we doing? Good. Pratt and Whitney's Jill Albertelli and her team oversee 400 suppliers worldwide. This is our operations command center where this team is looking at what could be over 45,000 parts that are somewhere in our supply base. This center implemented in advance of the Pure Power engine orders, a way to look over the shoulder of all the companies that directly impact Pratt's delivery dates. It takes every part to build the jet engine, whether it's a large disc or a small bolt. You can't deliver an engine without it. We work very closely with our suppliers. Constantly they're giving us updates on where the parts are in their process within their manufacturing facilities. Um, waiting for the engineer to give us a response. And if something pops up as a potential problem, my team will go visit suppliers so we don't have a single point of failure. Pratt's success scoring the volume of orders is spreading prosperity all across the state. 90 companies in 52 Connecticut towns, part of its critical supply chain. And it's exciting to know that there are companies in Connecticut in the U.S. Um, that are, are pushing the boundaries of what's possible. After all, that's the legacy of Pratt's founding father, Frederick Rentschler. In the 20s, he himself questioned the conventional wisdom and invented technology for an air-cooled engine that replaced the liquid-cooled engines everyone was flying at the time. His wasps and hornets promised lighter weight and greater reliability and ultimately became the mainstay of the military. He questioned what was possible and said uh, the air-cooled aircraft engine is the way to go. People didn't believe him and he made it a reality. Pratt employee David Borb remembers the stories his grandfather used to tell about being recruited by Rentschler in the early days. And when Fred came up here, he asked my grandfather to come up here because he knew he was a good machinist. When they came here, they made him the supervisor of the shop. It's exciting time to be at Pratt and Whitney. It's exciting time to, to know that you're making another mark on aviation history. So this is a great opportunity for us, for our company, and really for the team that's here that's working this. We're about as excited as we can be. It's a very exciting time in, in the jet engine industry. It's something that, it feel like it's part of history. It's a good challenge for all of us. What do you think your grandfather would think of all of this? He'd probably be amazed. Absolutely amazed.